my face or my voice to be on television. This clandestine PCP cook, who I'll call Flacco, was caught manufacturing PCP and spent 28 years in prison. Who do you think was the first person that brought this information into South Central LA, the first person to give it the recipe to people so that they could make it in underground labs? Well, it was taught by a professor. The professor showed the inner city youth how to make this, and he brought this to the city. And I don't want to reveal that individual's name because that individual has never seen a day in jail. And I would not want to put him in position to where that happened. I was fortunate enough to be around somebody when they taught me. And then I took it upon myself to read and research to make sure I understood. Even though I was only 13 years old, I seen it one time and I knew exactly what to do from that moment on. Would you say that it's fun, something that you enjoy doing, something that, you know, while you're doing it, it was exciting, it was... There was a time that I enjoyed doing it because I look at it as something that's very artistic. I look at it as a, a form of art. I look at it as something that was uh, very unique and something that a chosen two people knew how to do. Have young people come up to you and asked you about a recipe or asked you to teach them what you know? Yes. I had a lot of people ask me that. And I have never given it to anyone. Do you keep it secret because you don't want other people competing with you or you don't want them getting hurt? The reason I don't want to give it to someone because I don't want anybody to say that I gave it to them. But when the conversation turned to phenyl magnesium bromide, he couldn't help but talk shop. And I couldn't help but listen. So 400 grams. Hmm. Sorry, say that it was 400 grams. 4,000. Oh, oh, so 4,000 grams. Huh? In order to understand a street drug, it's vital to understand the technique of a street chemist. So I took Flacco's recipe to the lab with a small modification that ensured the final product would be legal. The idea behind this experiment is to mimic the so-called bucket method. Instead of 32-gallon rubber-made trash cans, we're going to use Pyrex beakers and under controlled laboratory conditions. In under 30 seconds, I'm going to tell you exactly how to manufacture PCP, or in this case, the morpholine derivative of PCP, PCMO. Sodium bisulfide is added to an aqueous cyclohexanone solution, precipitating an adduct that's subject to nucleophilic attack from lone pair electrons on the morpholine amine, forming a solution in which the hemiaminal and aminium ion exist in equilibrium. The aminium carbon undergoes nucleophilic attack from cyanide. You can smell the cyanide in the air right now. Just the quantity that we're using now is enough to kill several people. Oh, many people, yeah. Everyone here. Yes. <laughs> This is fun. Producing an alpha amino nitrile, which is isolated from the aqueous reaction mixture and redissolved in ether for a brûlant reaction. In solution, the alpha amino nitrile is in equilibrium with an aminium ion, which undergoes nucleophilic attack from phenyl magnesium bromide, driving the reaction toward the formation of PCMO. This is what would be sold, and this is what we could dip a cigarette into, um, and would be the final product that could be sold on street level. Flacco's method works for clandestine manufacture of PCP, but it results in the formation of cyanogenic impurities and a product that's more toxic for the end user. <laughs> 